Welcome to Vegas, the city without clocks. In the casinos, anyway. Here at CSI, time is something we pay close attention to. Because the early hours of a murder investigation are key. As our newest crime scene investigator, your credentials are strong. But the proof is in your performance. Gail, yeah, we've got a situation over... Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. Catherine Willows, let me introduce you to our newest CSI. Now, what have you got for us? Art gallery owner by the strip with an unexpected exhibit on his showroom floor. A dead body. Possible homicide. Thanks, Kath. Okay, I'm partnering you with Warwick Brown on this case. He'll help show you the ropes. But your own CSI skills are what we're counting on to crack this case. Catherine, I have lab work to get back to. Would you supervise this case? You got it, Gil. And you should head to that art gallery now. Oh. And remember, as G.K. Chesterton once said, the criminal is the creative artist, the detective only the critic. Hey, I'm CSI Work Brown. I'm glad to have some help on this one. We got a dead Vic on the floor and a live gallery owner waiting in the sidelines. Are you ready? Pay close attention. We're in the art world. And if you don't know how to look at something, you won't understand what it means. The Vic's face down. Spatter pattern on the wall close by indicates blunt force trauma. Take a photo of this. It's always good for future reference. You're gonna need an angle that shows the Vic's position in relation to the spatter. I want you to note the blood spatter here. For a visual pattern like this, you'll want to use the digital camera. Then you can get the blood afterwards. Well, if a picture's worth a thousand words, we got several thousand here telling us what went down. The Vic was hit at least twice. Pattern in her position relative to it tells us so. The first blow probably caused the puncture wound and sent her to the ground. The second blow, while she was down, created the blood spatter. Too pretty, too young, and way too dead. Pay close attention to the body. There could be evidence anywhere from head to toe. Hey, maybe we just got lucky. That blood print says somebody's shoe picked up transfer. That's no human hair. It's too thick. Some kind of animal, maybe. Whoa. With a rock like that left behind, I doubt we have a robbery. This was personal. The blood flowed from the head wound and naturally pooled around her. That suggests she bled to death right here. Wallet, cash, or ID. Could this be a glorified mugging? Six 
Is too large for an earthbound bird? If art theft was the motivation, why not take the other two birds as well? Nice catch. Whoever bagged our bird may have left that print. This is the Nathan Ackerman Fine Arts Studio, and I am Nathan Ackerman. My art? Displaying the creativity, and on occasion the genius, of my exhibitors, in a setting that is itself a work of art. Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? Please do. Consider me your host and ally. Don't hesitate to ask if I can help you resolve this, uh, this affair quickly and cleanly. I'll see what we can do. But Mr. Ackerman, there's nothing clean about murder. I was out briefly on an errand, and to my devastation I discovered a client, Rachel Maddox, dead on my gallery floor. You must understand that this is a crushing blow. Rachel was an excellent client and a dear friend. I can't imagine who would do such a thing. Perhaps a vagrant or one of these psychopathic killers you read so much about? Rachel was about to be a bride. She had commissioned a painting and a sculpture, both of herself, for her wedding from one of my best artists. Unfortunately, he can also be one of my slowest artists, and Rachel and her fiancé were, well, let's say, fit to be tied that the art pieces, which were due some time ago, were not ready. I had an emergency overnight artwork delivery to ship. I needed to leave by 5 p.m., but Rachel was adamant we had to wait for the artist to come. I really shouldn't have left the two of them alone in the gallery, but they are, were, respectable clients. Anyway, Rachel, well, refused to leave. She said she was staying put just in case. I believe her words were, irresponsible ass of an artist does me the supreme favor of showing up. So that's how I came to leave the two of them here, and I had intended to be back before we closed at six. As it was, it was 6.10 before I returned and found the door wide open and Rachel... Rachel in this terrible posture. As for her fiancé, he was nowhere to be seen. This is the most ghastly thing that has ever happened at the Nathan Ackerman Fine Arts Studio. What kind of mad beast are we dealing with here? Patrick Milton. Many of the works in this showroom are in fact his. He is not a critical darling, considered by some too commercial, but the public loves him, and as long as they do, so do I. Ah, that was the spark that lit the fuse of the argument between Rachel and Mark. The artist had vowed to be here with the finished painting and sculpture first thing this morning, but he didn't show up at all, not the first time. And Rachel flew into a rage when he did not appear. Heavens, our association goes back years, almost a decade. Quite frankly, he's the star here. I've displayed and sold hundreds of his works. I could have sold more, but he misses so many deadlines. No matter how hard I've tried to breed professionalism into his artist's soul, I failed. Still, he does sell. Ridiculous as it might seem, no. I have never once in all the years of our very successful association even seen his studio. As I say, he's quirky, private to the point of reclusiveness. Oh, but of course I have a phone number and a P.O. box. He wants his checks, after all. That'll be enough to track him. Thanks, Mr. Ackerman. Her fiancé is one Mark Stock, a taciturn fellow with a physique worthy of a Greek sculpture and just about as talkative. Frankly, he has the personality of a doorstop and the artistic taste of a hillbilly. Forgive my candor. 
The man does have his admirers. He's an ex-baseball player of some kind from the minor leagues, I believe. As I said, he was here with Rachel when I left, but when I returned, she was alone, undead. Yes, they were having an argument about the art, which was unusual as Mr. Stock had never expressed an opinion from the beginning. Now he was making a stand. He said it was foolish to make such a fuss, and the wedding could easily go on without these silly pieces. But Rachel wasn't having any of that. In Mr. Stock's words, he can sound rather shrill for such a strapping specimen of masculinity. He said Rachel had become unreasonable and out of control over the artist not showing up. And, well, honestly, he had a point. She did have that, that side to her. Understand, I was very fond of Rachel, but frankly, some of the invective she hurled was directed not just at her fiancé, but, if you can imagine, at me. Fortunately, a truce between the betrothed had come to pass before I had to leave. They were even, shall we say, affectionate. I felt comfortable enough leaving them alone. The storm had blown over, and they were like lovebirds again. To me, Mark Stock would be an enigma if he had a higher IQ. During their tiff, he seemed cold, emotionless. He's one of those passive-aggressive types who occasionally erupt, but in a strange, distant way, unleashing a torrent of abusive language, but delivering that invective in a controlled, cruel manner, seemingly devoid of any feeling. They visit Vegas frequently, weekend getaways, on which they invariably stop by my gallery to do business. Rachel did so love art. What was the question? Ah, no, I have no address. They flew in for their wedding, and I have no idea at which hotel, though it will certainly be one of the pricier ones. Oh, I can tell you it's a disaster. That's one of our most valuable pieces. Hawks are a specialty of Mr. Milton's, and that's a signature work. Any Milton collector would kill to... Uh, excuse me, that was an unfortunate burst of hyperbole. But I can say with no exaggeration at all that the Birch Predator is an expensive item indeed. And I'll be calling my insurance agent as soon as we're done here. Do you have a photo of that missing statue? Standard operating procedure in the art game. I'll be glad to get it for you, though I'd appreciate its eventual return. Insurance, you know. Be my guest. My fingerprints are all over this gallery, both literally and figuratively. As I said, I intend to cooperate fully. My life is an open book. Uh, no, I'm sorry, no. What happened to full cooperation? Your life an open book? My life is an open book, that I pledge to you. But I can't allow this door to be opened. I may seem inconsistent, but there are many expensive, even priceless objects dark back there, and I cannot risk damage. Particularly when I see no relevance to your investigation, since it's been locked throughout this entire unfortunate affair. I'm sorry, unless you have a warrant, I can't... Uh, I just can't allow you to go flinging your fingerprint powder around and spritzing your various sprays. <laughs> 